So welcome everybody again to the seminar Logistics in Quarantine. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me on behalf of the Brazilian Logic Society and of the Logic Interest Group of the Brazilian Computer Society to introduce Professor Jeremy Avigar, who kindly accepted our invitation to give a talk in the seminar. Jeremy will talk about formal mathematics and the Lean Theorem Improver. Professor Avigar, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's it's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here with you virtually. Uh, so I've been practicing uh, all all uh, afternoon. I want to say uh, Hola Brazil and Boa Tarde. Um, uh, so let me mention that the slides that I'm about to show you they're already online on my webpage, so you can you can find them there. Um, and and I'm, I'm 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 speaking from my home. I'm always anxious that there's going to be some internet trouble and so on. So if I'm cutting out or I'm not coming through clearly, um, you know, please do let me know. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, well, I mean, if I cut out entirely, you, you maybe can't let me know, but <laughs> but uh, let me know if there if there are problems if you can. Um, and uh, what else do I want to say? Um, oh yes. So if there are any, I, I'd like to keep this talking informal so uh, please don't hesitate to interrupt uh, with questions um, yeah and I think probably you know the best way to do that is just you know open up your mic and, and ask um, if uh, 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 yeah if, if Bruno has any other suggestions for moderation feel free to jump in but otherwise just just feel free to interrupt me um, but I'd like to start with a, a quotation and then I'll, I'll quiz you I'll ask if you can sort of identify the source so the quotation uh, starts uh, the development of mathematics towards greater precision has led, as is well known, to the formalization of large tracts of it. So one can prove any theorem using nothing but a few mechanical rules. The most comprehensive formal systems that have been set up hitherto are the system of Principia Mathematica on the one hand, and the zermelo frankel axiom system of set theory on the other. Uh, these two systems are so comprehensive that in them all methods of proof used today in mathematics are formalized, that is, reduced to a few axioms and rules of inference. One might therefore conjecture that these axioms and rules of inference are sufficient to decide any mathematical question uh, that can at all be formally expressed in these systems. Uh, so who is this? Anybody want to open up a mic and shout out the source? Hilbert. Uh, close, uh, Girdle, Kurt Girdle. Oh, I was and guessing what, guess that. Yeah, so, and what gives away is actually the, the very next line says, uh, uh, it will be shown below that this is not the case. So he's building up the uh, the, the the first incompleteness theorem. We say, look, you might think that everything is formalizable. I'm gonna show you that there are, you know, there, there, are, there are undecidable statements, there are statements that are uh, true, but not, not provable. Um, but I wanna focus here on the on the positive claim. So, so of course, Girdle should, so that there are there are true statements that are not provable, uh, but the positive claim is that most ordinary mathematics is. So going back here, I don't know if uh, if I move the mouse if you see it, but uh, um, that uh, all methods of proof used today in mathematics are formalized, which is a really remarkably strong uh, strong claim. Um, so, uh, you know, at the time, this was formalizable in, in principle. Uh, you know, most mathematical arguments rely on chains of definitions that are far too long to, to make it uh, practical to, to formalize, uh, you know, to actually formalize uh, um, uh, proofs fully. Uh, but the remarkable thing is that these days, with the help of computational proof assistance, it's possible to formalize math in practice, uh, which is to say it's, it's possible to prove theorems uh, completely down to the axioms and rules of a formal axiomatic system. Uh, and in fact, you know, when you're working with such a proof assistant, in many such systems, you know, when you're done, when the system says you proved something, buried deep in the, you know, the bowels of, of the memory, there's a, there's actually a, a, a data structure that is a formal proof that you can extract and, you know, maybe verify with, with another, another system. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so some of the systems out there that uh, have substantial mathematical libraries I've listed here, uh, so I'm not gonna you know, run through all the names, um, but in parentheses, I've also um, indicated the formal, you know, the, roughly the formal framework on which they're based. So some of them are based on set theory, some of them are based on simple type theory, dependent type theory, um, and so on. So I'll, I'll say a little bit more um, about that uh, afterwards. Um, but also to give you a sense, here are some kind of big name theorems that have been formalized uh, to date. Um, so the prime number theorem is, um, I did that early on with some students from Carnegie Mellon in 2004. Uh, John Harrison, so I, I, I did that in the Isabel theorem prover. Um, in 2009, John Harrison did a, a, a proof using complex analysis in, um, in, uh, in his system, Hall Light. 
but uh, there's Georges Gontier, the Four Color Theorem in Cook, uh, the Jordan Curve Theorem, that was Tom Hales and Hall Light. Uh, Shankar in 1986, uh, uh, proved the first incompleteness theorem in the Boyer Moore theorem prover. Uh, more recently, Larry Paulson did the second incompleteness theorem um, in Isabel. Uh, John Harrison again first proved Dirichlet's theorem on primes and arithmetic progression. Um, uh, I did the central limit theorem with Johannes Holzl and uh, an undergraduate student, Luke Serafin. Uh, the independence of the continuum hypothesis or the consistency of the continuum hypothesis was done by Larry Paulson and Isabel, um, but more recently, both both directions, uh, including a for forcing proof of the independence, uh, was done by Jesse Hahn and Floris Van Dorn in Lean. Um, and so formalizing a big name proof is always nice because it's like, you know, it's, it's like planting a flag, you know, you got there first, it's a recognizable uh, achievement. Uh, but more important than the theorems that have been formalized are, you know, the, the general libraries that, that support them. And so, you know, these days, if you, you look at the theorem provers out there, you can find good libraries for number theory, real and complex analysis, topology, measure theory, you know, algebra, you know, category theory, you know, dynamical systems. I mean, roughly, you know, most undergraduate, yeah, you know, at the undergraduate level, most undergraduate mathematics, you know, one way or another has been formalized. I mean, some in some cases more than that, but um, but you know, most uh, most undergraduate mathematics um, is out there. Um, okay, and there have also been some kind of landmark achievements. Uh, so one is uh, the verification of the fight thompson odd order theorem. Uh, um, so that was completed in 2012. Um, and so that was done by Georges Gontier uh, and a, a team. I mean, on the paper, I think there were about 14 co-authors of which uh, I was I was one of them. Um, so it was a big it was a big project, but uh, um, uh, but there are you know some statistics. Uh, uh, but it was formalized in Koch uh, using uh, the SS Reflect library. So there's a proof language in a library that Georges uh, designed. Um, so that was completed in 2012. Um, and another landmark achievement was Tom Hales's uh, verification of the Kepler conjecture. Again, uh, he led a team of, of people, uh, so I think there's an even larger, um, you know, co-author list. Uh, most of the proof was verified in Hall Light. A little bit, uh, uh, you know, parts of it were done in Isabel, um, and uh, so maybe I'll come back to that later. But yeah, so these are kind of these big landmark achievements. Um, okay. Um, and so, you know, when I tell you about, you know, achievements like this, you think, okay, it's nice that people are out there formalizing. Um, but, you know, the point I want to make is that, uh, you know, that this is, this is, uh, uh, this is for everybody, right? Uh, so when, uh, in the Old Testament, when God gives the law to the Jewish people, uh, God says that, uh, you know, this law that I'm giving you, it's not in heaven that, that you should say, who shall go up for us to heaven to bring it unto us and make us hear it that we may do it. Uh, it's, it's not up in heaven. It's, it's down here. So, for example, let me see if I if I click this. So, if I click on this, oh look, there's a uh, uh, the Isabel page, right? And you, if you want to use Isabel, and if you look, you can go to the installation page, and it'll tell you how to install it. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, so it knows I'm on Linux. It'll tell you Windows. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, and you go to documentation. You can get uh, you know tutorials and and so on. Um, and so, I mean, it, 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 so there's a lot of systems out there. Um, uh, you can, you know, see Cock, you can see uh, MetaMath. Um, uh, later in the talk, I'm going to tell you specifically about the Lean Theorem Prover. Uh, and again, there's a web page and there's lots of documentation out there. So these are, you know, these are all things that, that you know, you can just, right after I'm done speaking, you can sit down, click click a few links and, and you know, be up and, and, and going. Um, okay. So um, here's an outline of the talk. Um, so I've... Uh, um, started telling you about interactive theorem proving, um, and I want to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about why this is, you know, mathematically interesting. Why mathematicians should care about interactive theorem proving, um, and then I want to talk about why logicians should care, um, and then I'll spend uh, a little bit of time talking about uh, Lean. It's a theorem prover that uh, I'm invested in and particularly fond of, um, and then if there's time at the end, uh, I might we might play with Lean together. I might give you a little bit demo or, or show you around a little bit so we can see how the how the time goes. Uh, again, I do want to keep this informal, so please don't don't hesitate to you know to to stop me and ask questions. Um, okay. Um, so why mathematicians should care? Well, so I think you know we're we're all familiar with the fact that you know that that uh, uh, mathematics aims for rigor and understanding, and these are both important parts of of mathematics. Um, in 1993, Arthur Jaffe and Frank Quinn 
published an article in the Bulletin of the American Mathematical Society, which kind of, uh, so it was coming from the point of view of, of, uh, of physics, um, but it, it pointed out that in, in, in the mathematics at the time, they pointed out that, look, there's some mathematics that's you know, fully rigorous, but there was also mathematics that was kind of more exploratory, speculative, conjecture, you know, claims made based on intuitive arguments without all the details um, spelled out. And they wanted to call attention to this divide and raise a discussion as to how to deal with it. They, they chose the, the phrase theoretical mathematics to refer to this kind of more, uh, more, more uh, speculative type of mathematics. And they raised the question of, you know, is this good for mathematics? Is it bad for mathematics? How can, you know, when people make speculative claims, how can we give appropriate credit to people who later come along and prove them um, and so on? Um, and the article was um, remarkable uh, in part for the response it gathered. So uh, a few months later, in early 1994, the bulletin published um, a, a list of responses with, I mean, Fields medalists, I mean, just luminaries in mathematics and physics and computer science. Uh, it just, just, you know, really heavy hitters um, with very, very strong responses. Uh, and it's really interesting to read because the responses were all over the place. Uh, some of uh, you know some of them were the, of saying that well, that's silly to talk about theoretical mathematics. You know, mathematics isn't if it's not rigorous, it's not mathematics, right? Rigor is 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 is, is essential. And others were saying that look, this war, this this concern about rigor, it's you're just being too uptight, right? The importance of mathematics is understanding and exploration. And if you you know, mathematics has always been able to mediate between the two. And if you you know, if you try to down in any way, you'll really be doing mathematics a disservice. Um, you know, this debate between rigor and understanding, it, it reminds me of another, uh, another debate um, uh, over beer. So in the, when I was growing up, I was born in 1968. Hey, hey, uh, in the late 1970s, in the early, Jeremy. what? Yeah. What do, was do, the name of, yeah. Of, that, of that article? I, um, in, yeah. Um, if you if you Google Jaffe Quinn <laughs> AMS, uh, it'll come up right away. You'll find it pretty quickly. Um, I have it. I have well, it someone, someone somewhere. Someone chatted it. Um, I just remember reading it. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. Um, I was just. I have to go look and see if the one I was thinking of. So it's if you if you can find it online and it is open access, both the article and the responses, and uh, they're they're really interesting to read. Even after all this time, they you know they they hold their own well. Um, so yeah, I recommend it. Um, so yeah, so it reminds me of, uh, of, of the great beer debate. So Miller Brewing Company ran a series of advertisements for its light beer, Miller Light. And uh, you know, all the commercials there, that sort of a similar theme. You would basically have a bunch of beer drinkers, you know, maybe in a bar, or maybe in a football stadium, um, involved in this, this heated argument about whether a Miller Lite is great because it tastes great or is less feeling uh, less filling, right? So half the people would shout out, tastes great, and the other half would shout out, uh, less filling. Um, oh, and, and uh, uh, Peter, I hear a little bit of static. I think maybe your microphone is still on. There we go. Um, um, so they would, you know, they would have these, you know, these funny debates, and it, I, I feel that the debate over mathematical rigor and understanding is kind of similar. That it, it, it misses the point, right? I mean, both are important to mathematics, um, and in fact, it's it's the rigor in mathematics that makes the understanding meaningful. It, it tells us what it is that we're understanding, right? So that there's this, there is this interplay between the two, um, but you shouldn't view them as being at odds with each other. And the reason I bring it up here is that when people are, when mathematicians are kind of skeptical of formal theorem proving, I think they worry that the overemphasis on rigor um, misses the point that, you know, mathematics is about a conceptual understanding and the things that you can't formalize. And so if you invest too much effort in formalization, um, again, you're not doing real, real mathematics. Uh, and so what I want to emphasize is that, you know, you should think of a formal proof assistant as a tool. Um, so proof assistants are tools that can help us do mathematics better. And so I often like to compare them to uh, light, LaTeX. Uh, so nobody would say that, you know, communicating results is the most important part of mathematics or the only part of mathematics, or that typesetting is the most important part of mathematics. Uh, but nonetheless, communication is important and typesetting is important. And a tool that lets us do it better is, is a useful tool. Um, now, 
when a mathematician wants to learn to use LaTeX, there's a learning curve. I mean, you have to learn how to do these, you have to install it, you have to get it running, and you have to figure out how to use these backslashes and these dollar signs and so on. Um, but it's worth the effort if it helps us communicate better. It doesn't detract from the mathematics, it only, it only contributes to it. Um, and I think that's an important point. I mean, there is a trade-off. Um, and so, you know, the technology is worth it if it, if it helps us do the mathematics better. And in full honesty, uh, full disclosure, um, interactive theorem proving um, isn't there yet, in my view. Uh, as Bob Solovey once said to me, it's not ready for prime time. Um, right now, the effort needed to formalize theorems is, is more than we'd like it to be. Um, but I'll try to make the case that the technology is, is, is getting there. It's, uh, 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 and so it's, it's one that we should foster and, and nurture and support. Um, uh, but another reason that we should care about interactive theorem proving is that uh, interactive theorem proving um, in general is an instance of what are known as formal methods in computer science. So in computer science, this phrase is used uh, for a body of methods uh, that are used to specify, develop, and verify complex hardware and software systems. And what makes formal methods formal is that they rely, first of all, on formal languages. So you, to make assertions and express constraints, you, you, know, you write down the, the claims you want to make in a formal language. Uh, you, you rely on formal semantics to say what the, what the claims mean. Um, so, for example, what it means to find something solving those constraints. Um, and, uh, and then you rely on formal rules of inference, uh, for example, to verify a claim or to carry out a search and, uh, you know, in, in a, in a uh, validity, satisfiability or validity preserving way. Um, okay. So to a computer scientist, formal methods are used to verify hardware and software systems. And when you transfer it to mathematics, um, what you're doing is you're using formal methods to verify mathematics or to, to, to do mathematics. And so when you transfer them to mathematics, they provide a body of logic-based computational tools that can use, uh, first of all, as I've made the case, to verify proof, uh, but also to verify computation. So um, even pure mathematics these days is relying more and more on extensive computation. And so um, uh, 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 formal methods give you a way to, to verify the correctness of, of uh, computational-based proof. Uh, but also um, uh, formal search methods. I'll say a little bit more about that um, in a bit. But uh, uh, you know, the discovery of new results, um, and more generally, you know, we've come to rely on things like you know, um, um, you know, the web and email and search engines and Google, you know, to to do mathematics when we communicate mathematics when we search for things. Um, um, Formal methods give us a way to use these things better and with more precision. So again, it, it gives us a body of tools for uh, that can support storing, sharing, and communicating uh, mathematical results. Um, and so I've, I've written a survey on formal methods uh, uh, more general uh, in an article in the notice of the uh, AMS. And uh, I gave an online talk at the most uh, uh, recent uh, uh, meeting of the Association for Symbolic logic, um, which was originally you know uh, intended to be in person, but it was uh, uh, made online because of the uh, uh, pandemic. Um, in fact, also uh, uh, recently, and by recently, I mean just yesterday, uh, there was a nice article on uh, Quanta uh, post, uh, 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 you know, put online that describes the use of uh, SAT solvers, so propositional satisfiability solvers to, to, um, uh, to uh, settle a longstanding uh, open problem in mathematics known as the, the Keller conjecture. Um, and if you ask me later, I can, I can say more about that. So, more beyond interactive theorem proving, there's this body of formal methods. And so I, I think you, you should think of interactive theorem proving as just sort of one, one part of it, right? It's just, it's just one part of the, this general scheme. And, um, and interactive theorem proving in particular um, has you start using mathematics in formal ways. Um, and then you have libraries and you can, you can uh, uh, you know, state things formally and start using tools to, to, to explore even further. Okay, so this is a, that's my spiel about why mathematicians should care about uh, interactive theorem proving. Um, let me say something about why logicians should care. Um, and originally, so I've used these slides before, uh, mostly with an audience of mathematical logicians in mind. Um, so I realized uh, um, that this series, um, and in, in the audience now, there's a mixture of mathematical logicians, computer science logicians, and philosophical logicians. Um, and so I think the computer science logicians are on board. Um, so, um, but interpret the next few slides as uh, an argument to the community of mathematical, the community of mathematicians, uh, of logicians in mathematics departments, 
um, that uh, that they should also be paying a little bit more attention to the new technology. Um, so the formal methods I've just described rely on uh, on uh, all the classical results from from uh, you know modern logic uh, you know through the through the uh, you know the middle of the 20th century. Um, so it you know relies on formal languages and axiomatic systems and soundness and completeness proofs and and the theory of definability, um, uh, structural proof theory, the notion of, of computability, what it means to be computable, um, you know term languages, lambda calculus. Scholarization decision procedures. Um, I mean, all of these things I've listed are, are, you know, to computer scientists working in the field. These are just the bread and butter. These are. This is just, you know, what this is just what the what the field is is built on. Um, which isn't to say that computer scientists haven't added a lot of um, insight as to how to put these things to good use, how to implement, how to develop these things to make them practically usable. Um, but the underlying theory is is what shapes the whole the whole effort, the whole enterprise. Um, and so to the mathematical logicians, so I say that, okay, we've done all this, but what have we done lately? Um, the reason that, you know, one of the reasons that I think we love mathematical logic uh, is that we can look back to the 20th century and point to all the fundamentally important contributions it made towards clarifying what it means to do mathematics. Um, logic helped us understand the basic concepts of mathematics, uh, what it means to, the, the nature of proof, what it means to prove something, what the axioms are, what the rules of inference, um, notions of language and reference and expressivity and definability, what it means to be computable. Uh, and these types of developments had bearings on not just all aspects of mathematics, but also computer science, linguistics, and philosophy and beyond. Right. So when we're really proud of mathematical logic, I think a lot of it is is you know looking back on this. Um, and uh, uh, and what I want to argue is that formal methods in mathematics today are really the modern embodiment of this of this tradition. I mean, this is where understand where this kind of understanding of mathematics is being put to use uh, today. Um, so just by way of background, um, so in logic, the uh, um, oh, and you know, it's been quiet for a while. Um, can somebody just say something and so that I know for sure that you're still there? It's a little bit disconcerting. Yeah, I hear Hello. somebody. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. We're here. Okay. okay. Like I said, I can't have somebody speak up and tell me if I've lost an internet connection. <laughs> so it's uh, it's good. I'll, I'll try to check in every once in a while. Um, We're live. Um, okay. So just by way of background, um, the uh, you know if you're working in a proof assistant, uh, you need to fix a formal axiomatic foundation. Uh, so that determines what it. You know what your proof system is. What 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 standards you're using to establish proofs, and there are three main families of foundations that are commonly in use today. Uh, of course, there's axiomatic set theory. Um, you know, zamello frankel set theory and, and various extensions. There is uh, simple type theory, um, and there is dependent type theory. Um, and I don't want to go you know through the whole history and the kind of a detailed discussion of the differences between them. Um, again, if you look at in red, if you find this on my webpage and you click on it, so I've actually written a draft chapter for an upcoming handbook of uh, proof assistance, um, and uh, uh, and so you know you can see you know more of a discussion of of the differences between them. Um, but I want to I want to bring this up because you know there are there are uh, Often these really silly arguments on the foundational, on the foundations of mathematics mailing list, these dis discussion groups over whether set theory or dependent type theory is the true or proper or better or best foundation for mathematics, and they really just kind of annoy me. Um, in a sense, it, it doesn't matter, right? These are all inter-translatable, inter-interpretable, and so on. Um, the choice of which foundation to use for is a uh, uh, for proof assistant. It's really a pragmatic one. It's not an. It's not ideology. It's it, it's really a pragmatic one. It's which one is going to support the mathematics you want to do, and there's no clear winner. There are pluses and minuses to all of them. the The big difference is that in set theory, as you know, everything is is officially a set. You know, numbers are sets, functions are sets. Uh, you know, uh, that hyperbolic spaces are sets, groups are. Everything is a set. Uh, in type theory, in the language of type theory, um, you have a language for describing types of objects and language for describing objects, and every object has a type, right? So, so you know, the natural numbers, you know, a natural number has the type natural number, a function has a function type, uh, and so on. So built into the foundation, there are different sorts of things. Um, and um, again, as I said, 
you can interpret, you know, type is just a set. Um, so you can interpret, you know, type theory and set theory. Uh, or if you're working in, you know, type theory, well, if you want sets, you can just posit a type of sets and say that they satisfy or construct them and prove or, you know, in, in various ways you can interpret set theory. So again, you know, they're, they're intertranslatable. Um, the reason that computer scientists like to have types is that um, they, they well, they, they, a number of benefits. They allow you to overload notation. Um, they provide better error checking, right? If you type a nonsense expression, very often uh, a type system can catch it because, you know, you're sending arguments of the wrong type to a function or something like that. Uh, and types can be used in various ways to infer um, information. Okay, so it's, it's really a pragmatic issue. Um, and so just to, to give you a sense, I'm, I, I'm going to give you some kind of formal statements written in the Lean Theorem Prover, which is based on a dependent type theory. Um, so, you know, these, these examples are by uh, Chris Hughes, who is still an undergraduate at Imperial College in London, so a student. So here's a quadratic reciprocity. So here is the Legendre symbol. So uh, the Legendre symbol of AP uh, uh, is defined to be if, uh, if A mod P is equal to zero, then it's zero. Uh, otherwise, if uh, A is a square modulo P, then it's one, otherwise uh, minus one. And then quadratic reciprocity says if uh, P and Q are odd primes, so distinct odd primes, so this is P mod two is equal to one in lean, that's, you know, that's the idiom, that's how we say that P is odd. But if P is odd and Q is odd and P is not equal to Q, then the Legendre symbol of P and Q times the Legendre symbol of Q and P uh, is equal to, you know, negative one to p over two times q over two. And for example, the fact that, uh, um, that uh, p and q are uh, uh, natural numbers uh, is what tells the system that, for example, that this multiplication is multiplication on the natural numbers. Okay, here's uh, also um, uh, Lagrange's theorem. It says that here G is a group. It's a finite group. So the underlying type, the carrier of G is finite. P is a natural number, it's a prime. Then for all n, if p to the n divides the cardinality of g, then there is an h, a subgroup of g, such that the cardinality of h is equal to p to the n. Okay, so it looks like computer code, but it's computer code that you know is 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 a reasonably faithful representation of the mathematics. Um, here is uh, uh, here is a statement of oh, well the uh, the uh, construction the UNEDA this is the 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 uh, uh, UNEDA functor uh, this is by Scott Morrison who is in Australia a mathematician in Australia and so uh, you know it's a, it's a functor from C to to pre uh on on C so functors from C op to sets but. Since we're doing uh, type theory, it's going to types. But to define a functor, you have to give you know the the map on the, you have to give the map on objects uh, and the you know the functorial map, and that's what these do. And because oops, uh, uh, because it's returning a functor again, there's a nested functor, and here you have to show that composition is associative and so on. Anyhow. This is this is uh, roughly the the definition of the UNEDA lemma, and then the statement that uh, the the UNEDA uh, functor is full and faithful. Um, I guess one more example. This is by uh, 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 Sebastian Guzel, who's a French mathematician who does dynamical systems and ergodic theory. Uh, so he's been using Lean, uh, formalizing manifolds, and I'm just putting this up because there's just so many moving parts here. So uh, I mean, I, I don't even know what a smooth manifold with corners is, but uh, um, uh, there's there's an online talk you can hear him talk about this definition. But you've got uh, you've got a normed field. You've got uh, E is a uh, is a, uh, a normed group, and it's a norm space over K. H is a topological space, and well, anyhow, and uh, so there's a there's a groupoid structure on something or other. Um, anyhow, so this is this is Sebastian Guzel um, definition in Lean of a smooth manifold fold with corners. Okay. Um, so, so again, the whole business is, is putting logic to practical use and developing the language in, 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 in ways so that you can express the mathematics you want to do. Um, uh, uh, but beyond the formal systems and uh, uh, being able to express things, um, another thing that's, I think, needed to, to help the, the, the field move along is better automated methods. Right, filling in details of a proof is 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 fiddly and painstaking and tedious, and what we really want is uh, is automated tools that uh, that make it easier that that help us fill in fill in details. 
Uh, and so in computer science, uh, you know, I'd say that, you know, automated mathematical reasoning, it's, it's really a new frontier um, where we're still learning how to do it and, and do it effectively. Um, in the field, one distinguishes between domain general methods. So these are methods that apply, you know, across all lots of branches of mathematics. So propositional theorem proving, first order theorem proving, equational reasoning, using higher order constructions. Um, and by combination methods, uh, I mean methods that combine heterogeneous forms of reasoning um, from different, uh, you know, in different domains. And then in domain specific uh, methods, so there are methods that are good for reasoning about, you know, linear in equations, inequalities in the integers and the reals uh, and so on, uh, nonlinear real arithmetic, algebraic methods. Um, so again, these are things that are built on decidability results from classical logic. Um, but again, put to good use in that they give us ways of producing proofs automatically in, in, in proof assistance. Okay. And so, you know, here, um, this is a place where I'd like to see uh, mathematical logicians getting uh, more involved. Um, I mean, again, it's, it's firmly in the tradition, but it involves uh, developing languages, not only that are expressive in principle, but will actually let us express the mathematics we want to express in practice, and foundations that are adequate in practice, and search methods and decision procedures that, 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 that work. Uh, we have to learn better how to maintain uh, and manage large databases of mathematical knowledges, how to combine uh, heterogeneous methods in mathematics, how to use external mathematics from within provers, how to share information between theorem provers, uh, how to use results from computer algebra systems in, in uh, uh, rigorous and verified ways, uh, how to share data between systems, how to verify numeric computation, uh, and so on. And of course, machine learning. I mean, all of us in logic are looking at, at machine learning with a little bit of trep that you know, machine learning seems to be taking over the world. Uh, but realistically speaking, we need to learn, understand what machine learning can do and can't do and where logical methods are appropriate, where machine learning methods are appropriate and, and how to, to get them to work together. Okay, um, so um, let's see, I'm gonna try to, 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 to stop this at 50 minutes so that we can have some discussion. And like I said, uh, there are lots of things that I can show you and we can play around with lean together, uh, but I think I'm pretty much on schedule. So I've told you about interactive theorem proving in general. I've made a case that this is something that mathematicians should, should care about. And, uh, and uh, uh, even mathematical logicians, um, I've argued, you know, should, should uh, um, be paying attention to this new technology because there are a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, so now let me just talk about uh, lean, um, the lean theorem prover in particular. Uh, so Lean is a new interactive theorem prover uh, developed principally by Leonardo de Mora, who is a uh, researcher at Microsoft Research uh, Redmond. Uh, he's one of my heroes. He's really one of the most remarkable people I've, I've ever met. Uh, so Lean, it's an open source project. It's uh, released under a permissive uh, Apache 2.0 license. Uh, um, and you can go to the Lean you know, webpage and you know, find out more about it. Uh, so Leo launched the project in, in 2013. Uh, around 2017, he was kind of overwhelmed trying to do too much. He was trying to develop the system and at the same time respond to, to users with questions about how to do this and features and so on. So in, in 2017, actually something really useful and, and helpful happened that the uh, uh, a community of lean users split off the, the, the core, the, the main library and said, okay, we're gonna develop this outside the project. Um, and that led, left lean's developers um, you know, Leo and, and, and close colleagues to work on the next version of Lean and they're kind of holed up and focusing on that. Uh, and meanwhile, the community has been developing and you know, has been maintaining and, and extending Lean 3 and building the library. And so to see the Lean community web pages, you can go here. And the, and the, the web pages are, are very extensive and they're worth taking a look at. Again, if there's time at the end, we can I can poke around and so on. Um, but what's what's special about Lean compared to other theorem provers? Uh, I mean, just let me run run down you know a quick feature list. Um, it's built on a dependent type theory. Um, it's written in C plus um, uh, and it's written for performance. Though I will say that um, one direction that Lean four is going is that it developing over programming language, and so Lean four um, is largely implemented in Lean four itself. Um, so. That's, uh, we're, we're excited about that. Uh, but as far as checking proofs, there is a very small uh, trusted kernel that checks the correctness of proofs. And moreover, once you've proved something, there's a proof object that you can export and can be checked uh, independently. Um, lean syntax is very nice. There's a very powerful elaborator that will take user input and, and fill in uh, details. Um, type class inference is used for, uh, uh, for doing algebra. 
Um, there are different proof languages. There's a very nice proof language and different ways of writing proofs that then interact well. Um, there's uh, good support for editors. There's uh, the editor modes in Emacs and VS Code. And the VS Code um, editor mode is, is, is particularly nice. Um, you can run Lean in, in your browser. You don't have to install it on your computer. You can run it um, uh, in your browser. And again, there, yeah. Sorry, uh, we have a question from Andre Brookin. Uh -huh. uh, from, a, from a mathematician perspective, is it worth overcoming the learning curve in of Lean 3 or when Lean 4 is on the horizon? It's really hard to tell. Um, by the end of the summer, there should be a prototype working version of Lean 4 kind of ready for people to start trying. Uh, but then it'll be a long time before the library um, is ported. So this is something that the community thinks about a lot. The, 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 the current library has more than 300,000 lines of, uh, of mathematical proof. Um, and it's still very actively being developed. And there's a lot of documentation out there. Um, we're a little bit anxious about what the porting will be like. Lean4 will not be backward compatible. Things will change. And we'll have to port the library. Um, my recommendation would be, if you're interested, don't don't hesitate, don't wait, just start with Lean three. There's, there's, so Lean four, there's really not much. There there isn't documentation. There there there, there there's no library yet. Um, it's not there yet. So if you want to use Lean um, in the near future, I would recommend Lean three and just just dive in and start using it. Um, okay. Um, one um, neat feature of Lean is that you can l use Lean as a programming language and use as a programming language to extend the functionality of Lean itself and write more automation and procedures for building proofs. Uh, and so that's something that gets used a lot. And maybe if there's time later, I can say more about that. But there's a little bit of automation, not as much as we would like. There's a little bit of automation there. There's online documentation. Um, the best thing about Lean, in my view, is that there are just some, a lot of really energetic, enthusiastic, enthusiastic, and smart, and talented people involved. It's a really wonderful community. Um, um, so yeah, so those are those are the features. Um, so in 2017, there was a um, there was a, uh, a, a there was a special workshop, a six week workshop, at the Isaac Newton Institute in Cambridge on interactive theorem proving. Um, and at the time, you know, I would go around saying that really you could count the number of mathematicians using interactive interactive theorem provers on the fingers of, of one hand. Um, and by that, I, I really meant to include, exclude logicians. I mean, logicians are interested in theorem proving just because we're logicians. Um, but if you look at just mathematicians who just don't care about logic at all, um, very few were, were, were using. I mean, there's you know, Tom Hales, there's Vladimir Voivodsky, and you know, maybe one or two others. Um, but since then, in the last few years, uh, a really vibrant community of mathematicians have gotten excited about Lean. And so I've listed uh, you know, a number of them here. But these are people coming from number theory and dynamical systems and, and uh, you know, mathematical physics and, and category theory and so on, really from all over. And, uh, and, and these are people now that are actively involved in the development of, of the library. Um, um, again, I'll give you a link later, but it's easy to find. There's a Zulip uh, chat group. It's like, it's like Slack. It's a social media thing. Um, every day, it's a little bit overwhelming. I try to check in every day and skim over what's been happening. Hundreds of messages every single day. I mean, people just get up and they start using Lean and they start, you know, sending messages back and forth. Uh, newcomers are welcome. People show up and, and you know, start asking questions um, and so on. So it's a really, it's a place where people just kind of hang out and people are there around the clock. If you start learning to use Lean and you have a question, if you go to Zoom, typically you can ask a question, get an, often in seconds or in minutes, you have an answer to your question. Um, Kevin Buzzard uh, at Imperial College um, in London, so he's a number theorist. He's been a, a proselytizer for formal methods and formal mathematics. Uh, he's also a, a Pied Piper. He's been kind of training hordes of undergraduate students um, uh, uh, to, to use Lean. And some of them, uh, like Chris Hughes, Kenny Lau, Amelia Livingston, and Jean Lowe, are among the, the, the most uh, uh, prolific contributors to the math library. Uh, the library is growing quickly. It, it's, you know, the pandemic has been good for it. I mean, a lot of people you know, looking for something to do. Um, it's really growing kind of exponentially. Uh, 
Um, and recently, uh, uh, you know, there have been some nice uh, lean achievements. Uh, Sander Dahm and Johannes Holzwell and Rob Lewis uh, recently formalized a proof of the uh, allenberg gerstweig theorem, which is notable mainly because it's a recent mathematical theorem. So Kevin, Kevin Buzzard is always making the case that if you want mathematicians to get interested, you know, you don't want to formalize, you know, Lagrange's theorem that's been around for centuries. You want to formalize contemporary mathematics. So along uh, those lines, uh, he and Johan Karmelin and Patrick Masseau uh, formalized the, the notion, just the definition definition of a perfectoid space, what it what a perfectoid space is. It's a complicated definition. Um, and the reason they felt that that was important is that, you know, Peter Schultz uh, just won a Fields Medal for, for, you know, work related to the notion. And again, this is trying to make the case that you can take objects of interest, of interest to contemporary mathematicians and work with them formally in a formal theorem prover. Uh, and so, you know, why has Lean been such a success? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm delighted. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, a lot of it, I think it's random, but it is a nice system. You know, it's, uh, I'm very fond of it. Uh, it's, it is good for doing algebraic constructions, which are essential to mathematics. Um, uh, people using the system tell me that they like the documentation, that it's, if you're learning to use the system, there's, there's, you know, they, they, they like it. Um, I think also uh, early on, people like Mario Carnero, Johannes Holzl, Rob Lewis, um, uh, so Mario uh, is a current PhD student of mine. Rob is a, is a past student of mine. They were on Zulip almost, you know, round the clock answering questions, you know, to mathematicians, telling them how to do things, explaining things, providing help. Um, and so that was very important also. So again, the community aspect, the fact that there's such a welcome and energetic community, I think is an important um, part of it. Um, okay. And I think that's it. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with timing. So, um, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, so I've done what I said I would do. I've told you about interactive theorem proving and, you know, why mathematicians should care. And I've told you a little bit about the lean theorem prover. And so I propose to just stop talking for a minute so I can rest and have a sip of water and maybe you can ask one or two questions. Uh, but then if anybody's interest, uh, I mean, think of, so again, these are all live links. I can kind of show you some of the things out there. Uh, well, let me just show you, I can show you the lean chat group. Let's see if we can get a response. So if we come up. Um, yeah, so I was just on, so 67 messages, but you see since, you know, one, since, uh, since, okay, in the last hour and a half, there've been like 70 messages. Um, but, you know, here are people, discussions, uh, questions, how to define matroids, a little bit of stuff, lean code. So let's just try, let's see if I can get a response from people. So it's a new topic. So let me do under general. What just happened? Uh, so, uh, giving a talk. I'm in the middle of giving a talk to Brazilian logicians, logicians, telling them how great Lean is. Okay, so let's uh, do that and see if we. Uh, yeah, get a response. See, see how long it takes us to get a response out of that. Um, but then if you want, I can also, I have a window with, I have a, an editor open with Lean running. So if you want, I can show you that. So yeah, let me stop here for a couple of minutes and uh, uh, oh, even I'll stop sharing so I can I can see everybody's face and make sure you're still alive. Um, and yeah, so let me pause and, uh, uh, and uh, let you um, uh, ask some questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I would let, like just to suggest everybody to manifest it first on the chat, just to avoid a lot of people talking at the same time. Valeria? Yeah, Valeria, yeah. Hi, Jeremy. That is so cool. I mean, uh, I, I love this this conversation about automating uh, mathematics and stuff. Um, but I was thinking to myself that um, there's other things that we need to do apart from uh, mechanizing the real uh, proofs and stuff. I mean, I think there is an awful lot that could be done in terms of uh, improving the search for mathematics, right? Because, you know, 
to, to, to search for very trivial things, Wikipedia is there for you. But if you want to search, say, for symmetric one or the closed categories, just because you might be interested in linear logic, <laughs> you know, who knows, who knows, then, yeah. then you, you have a harder time to finding the theorems, the definitions, and, and you know. Yeah. I, so I, I, I agree. About tools for that. That's, that's what's my question. Yeah, so I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. So as I suggested, uh, I've been you know, this talk. I wanted to focus on the theorem proving aspect, but uh, but as I said, this is really only a small part of formal methods, um, and search methods uh, for even just searching for mathematical knowledge is 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 very important. Um, in interactive theorem proving, even when you're just sitting and working with a theorem prover and just trying to prove a theorem, the, the most annoying and difficult and tedious part is just finding the things in the library, finding the facts that, that you want to apply. Uh, and more generally, we want to find, you know, information on the web and so on. Um, in, in, uh, so in the ASL talk I mentioned, Mechanization of Mathematics, I say a little bit more about this. Um, so as far as search, uh, so Tom Hales has uh, launched a formal abstracts project. And there the idea, and it's, it's at least initially, it's, it's, it's based on Lean. But um, there, the idea is to um, um, is to develop. So, so as I said, uh, formalizing a theorem now is is much too much work and you know painstaking. It's really a high you know, high bar to entry. Um, Tom's proposal was that um, to get mathematicians involved as a first step in formal methods, um, ask mathematicians when they when you prove a theorem and you're ready to publish the paper. Don't formalize everything, but formalize your main definitions and a statement of your main theorem. Give a formal abstract, right? And the thought is that, you know, if we get mathematicians to do that, uh, then, well, so first of all, it's, yeah, it's a first step into the use of formal methods. People can then formalize. But moreover, you then get databases. You get databases of definitions and databases of theorems. Um, and that can be very useful for um, machine learning, data mining, search, and things like that. So that's sort of one project out there uh, along those lines. Uh, and there are others. There, there are a couple of big projects along those lines. So, um, the, so search for mathematical knowledge. Again, it's a brave new world. Nobody quite knows how to do it. Um, uh, again, the, so uh, another brave new world is machine learning in mathematics. What what you know what you really want to do is kind of let machine learning bot go you know, loose on on archive and and kind of formalize the statements for you. Um, um, again, people are working on things like that. There, are, there's incremental, there's small measures of progress. So we still have a long way to go. But, but um, I agree, these are, these are very important parts of, of, of the future of mathematics. Indeed. Well, thank you very much. That's, I mean, thanks for the great talk too, as usual. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure I mispronounced your name, but Chao Hong Chen asks if you could briefly talk about the advantage of Lean over Coq. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's uh, in computer science, you know, uh, computer scientists get in flame wars about programming languages and this one is better and that one's better and so on. It's the same thing with theorem provers. It's almost, it's a scandal that there's so many theorem provers out there and everybody has their favorite and everybody gets into fights as to, so I want to try to um, uh, avoid saying better. I mean, they're all, they're all different. Um, um, so between Lean and Cook, so they're based on a very similar foundation. Uh, one pragmatic difference is right now, um, so, uh, so they're both Lean and Cook are based on a constructive logic. So it's very good if you're a constructive mathematician or constructive logic, you want to do mathematics constructively. It's very easy to add classical axioms to Lean, uh, well, to either system. Um, uh, much more classical mathematics is so it's just by, by virtue of the fact that it's classical mathematicians developing the library um uh the library is taking this this turn towards towards you know use is classical so the libraries feel very different um it's uh the leans library is 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 much uh it's much more developed for just classical mathematics um otherwise difference they're both they're both good systems they're both good systems uh, I, so Cook has been around since the 80s, uh, which is so in a sense, you know, lean the device since the development of lean started afresh, you know, things that that uh, I mean, you could change things and Cook, there's a lot of legacy. Uh, on the other hand, Cook is a lot, much, a lot more mature. So there's a lot more infrastructure uh, around it and so on. Um, I don't know, they're both they're both good systems.
play around, try them out, and, and you know, and uh, and let me know what you think. So Peter Trollak asks, what do you think about using approving classes? Yeah, so, um, um, uh, so the difficulty with formal mathematics is that um, it really has no home. Um, uh, you know, computer scientists are happy to let mathematicians, I mean, they care about verifying hardware and software. You know, they're, they're happy that mathematicians, you know, are interested in proving theorems, but that's not what they really care about. I think uh, mathematicians look at this and they say, oh, it's nice that computer scientists are doing it and they're interested, but I, I don't, you know, it's very few math departments today, I think, are willing just to hire somebody who is just formalizing or an expert in formalization. Um, Kevin Buzzard's solution, his way around it, is to train the young, the next generation, young students. I mean, he's been training undergraduates. Mathemat you know, he's a mathematician, math mathematics students. And you sit them down and you say, this is how you do mathematics. And you show them how to use lean and how to formalize, in addition to teaching them mathematics. And so now they're growing up thinking that this is, is normal, <laughs> right? And hopefully the next generation of mathematicians will be using formal methods and supporting them and, and so on. Um, so in that sense, Sense. Um, you know, for, I, I care about mathematics more than computer science. Um, I think you know, if training is absolutely essential. Um, I have uh, I, there's an online textbook that I wrote with Rob Lewis and Floris Van Dorn. It's called Logic and Proof. It's an introduction to logic and, and mathematical proof um, that uses Lean. It's not a proof about. It's not a book about interactive theorem proving. It's a book about logic and how to write you know sets functions relations how to write ordinary mathematical proofs but lean is kind of woven into it uh, and uh, 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 so you know you can take a look at that um, also this summer with uh, uh, with Kevin Buzzard and Patrick Messo uh, we, and Rob Lewis we started uh, writing a new textbook called mathematics and lean which is really designed more to train uh, mathematics students and and mathematicians to 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 do mathematics to do ordinary mathematics and lean. Um, so we're trying to develop the uh, the materials, um, and yeah, I think it can be done at lots of levels. I think you can teach. I mean, so again, in computer science, people in computer science departments are teaching students to use these tools to do hardware software verification. Uh, I think you can use it to teach logic. I think you can use it to teach mathematics, and I think it's all all important. Carlos Olarte asks, uh, Coq is really good for good, uh, sorry, Coq is really good for verifying program systems and generating code correct by construction. Does Lean have yeah. features I like? Um, yeah, so um, uh, so there, so th that that's actually a good uh, answer to a previous question. Uh, if you're interested in extracting code, verifying correctness and extracting code, I would say use Coq right now because Coq right now is better. Uh, or wait a couple of years and then Lean 4, <laughs> Lean will be better. Um, so right now in Lean 3, you can write code and you can execute it. It has kind of a, a, a bytecode interpreter. Uh, so it runs like kind of interpreted Python and so on. So in Lean, it's possible to write code, verify its correctness and run it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's reasonably fast, but you can't extract code and compile it. Okay, um, so in a sense, uh, whereas in Coq you can, you can extract OCaml and you know use OCaml compilers and so on. So for code extraction, Coq is better now. Uh, as I said, Lean 4 is designed to really be a programming language and a performant one, and one that you can then you know extract code to C++ and compile it and so on. So um, the future of Lean 4 is to make it a really very powerful and performant programming language, and one about you know which you can and reason about code. Um, but it's not it's not there yet. Petrucio, thanks for the nice talk, and asks, when a mathematician publishes a result, we read the result and check its correctness as far as we can. Who checks the automated proofs? I mean, who gives us confidence on the accuracy of these programs? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a common question that comes up. You know, how do you know that the, 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 you know, that the verifier is correct? Uh, I mean, one answer is that um, the systems, even though they're very complicated, um, typically, computer—I mean, computer scientists, people working in the field—are very sensitive to the question of where, what you're trusting, where the trust is. And so, typically, what you want is to have a very small kernel. It's what they call the trusted computing base that's actually checking the proofs. 
Okay, so one thing you try to do to ensure correctness is you just have a very, very small, very carefully written kernel that, that, that's checking the proofs. And so you can have complicated software generating the proofs, but, but you know, as long as you, you've implemented the kernel correctly, you, 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 know, you can have faith in the results. Um, another thing that, that lends uh, credence to correctness is that people can uh, implement independent checkers. Uh, so for example, if you don't trust Lean's results, well, you can read the format, implement your own checker, and then you know, and then uh, interpolate. Uh, that said, people will also, um, uh, there are projects out there that um, uh, write specifications of the logic and verify the correctness of the checker. And in fact, there are projects that aim to verify the correctness of the checker down to machine code, down to x86. So, you know, th th this is kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, kind of extreme levels of, of paranoia that you want to, to, to check every down. Uh, let me say that practically speaking, um, if you're working with an interactive theorem prover, it's such a high standard of correctness. You can't get away with, it. I mean, every detail, it's, you know, every every base case, every side, every side condition, um, you really can't get away with anything. So, I mean, aside from maybe malicious hackers trying to find back doors through the system, uh, I mean, if you verified something in a proof assistant, you can be pretty damn sure it's correct. I mean, people have even, you know, talked about, well, you know, what are the odds that you have, uh, you know, cosmic rays tunneling and displacing electrons and they've done back of the envelope calculations and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, people in the field have, have you know, sort of made it a pastime to see how, how far you can push certainty. Um, practically speaking, though, any, anything verified is, 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 uh, is, is really a very high, high degree of, of confidence and trust. Marcelo Fing asks, have a new mathematical development occurred because one is using a formal prover? Does it open new doors for mathemati mathematics? Yeah. Um, so um, again, I think the more mathematicians get involved, the more it, it will be the case. Um, as I said, the, the theorem proofing um, is very much on the rigor and correctness and checkness. It's the tedious, it's getting all the details right. And so that's you know really where the focus is. Um, that said, very often, the very act of formalizing your mathematics um, causes you to reorganize and restructure and to figure out how to, how to get it done. Um, that often brings new mathematical uh, insights. Uh, I mean, Tom Hales years ago once gave a very nice talk while he was working on the uh, verification of the Kepler conjecture. He talked about how it gave new insights and proofs that actually um, there was the dodecahedral conjecture. There are other conjectures that, uh, uh, that the reorganization um, uh, that um, helped him solve as well. Um, George Gontier, when he was verifying the four color theorem, he used um, a combinatorial structure called, I think, hypermaps, which uh, I think predated his formalization, but it's, it, it was one that, that has had influence in, in combinatorics as being a good way to, to, to represent you know, com combinatorial and topological configurations. Um, in the Lean Library and in the Isabel Library, uh, limits are handled with filters, which is an idea that goes back to Bourbaki, but uh, I think the mathematicians involved with Lean are very fond of, of filters, that, that, that this gives you really sort of a nice conceptual way. So very often working formally, um, does kind of push you to reorganize and restructure your mathematics um, um, uh, in ways that that gives you new mathematical insights. Yeah. Let me say also um, there are there have been cases. Uh, uh, Sebastian Guzel gave a very nice talk uh, at a lean meeting last January where he talked about actually finding mistakes, uh, finding a mistake in an ergodic theory proof when he sat down to try to formalize it. So. Uh, uh, so interactive theorem proving does help find mistakes, big mistakes, small mistakes, uh, but it does help find mistakes. Um, and also, I think it's very good when you have a very technical, fiddly, subtle argument. Uh, again, Neil Strickland once gave, gave a talk along these lines that sometimes you just have these very fiddly arguments that you don't really believe yourself until you've formalized it that checks all the details. So in that sense, interactive theorem proving can also you know, help a certain type of very just delicate, fiddly proof with lots of details. Uh, Samuel Gomes asks, are there people trying to prove contradiction with theorem proofs? That is, checking the consistence of, for instance, ZFC? 
Um, uh, so I don't know of any. I don't know of uh, of many people who think that ZFC is uh, inconsistent. My advisor, Jack Silver, when I was a graduate student, Jack Silver famously did. Uh, he, he he doubted the consistency of ZFC, um, and uh, 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 but uh, I think if you're going to find a, a um, uh, some kind of contradiction in ZFC probably do it with a pen and paper proof first, or at least come up with the idea first and then try to work out the details. But no, I, I don't know of anybody that's working on that. So, uh, Claudio Nalon asks, I understand that formalizing proof does help with rigor. Considering, however, the level of automation those proofs now implement, do you think that they really help the understanding of those proofs? Yeah, um, again, sometimes, um, Formalization is just tedious. You're just investing a lot of effort to formalize things that you don't know damn well are true, and then you're fighting with the theorem prover to try to convince it. Um, there are cases, though, where um, where there are mistakes, again, ranging from big mistakes to small mistakes, where um, you know you sit down and you formalize something, and then you realize you thought you understood it, and then you realize that you don't. That actually there's there's more work to be done, and then working with interactively with the, it's like a, you know it's like having a desk calculator. You have to show A, B, and C, and it reminds you, oh wait, you have to show, oh you forgot this base case, oh wait, there's this side condition. So um, again, it's it's. I, I, I don't want to do hard sell. I can't go with in straight with a straight faith, go to mathematicians and say, you know, you really need to do this. This will make you a better mathematician. It'll change your life. Um, it is more, it is a pain in the neck, um, but I think it, 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 it does help. Yeah, in, 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 in cases it can help you do better mathematics. Do you have any other question or comment? So it looks not. Well, thank you very much, Professor Avigal. Would like to make some kind of demo or anything else? It's you know, it's, it's it's gone for a while. I think I've I, I've kind of hesitated to to kind of uh, 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 attempt to test everybody's uh, goodwill. Um, let me just say. Uh, uh, um, so as if you look at that last slide, if you click on the things that I would have shown you, there's a, a lot of material, a lot of resources out there. Go start start playing around with the tools, um, and then uh, and then and then come to Zulip. Zulip, introduce yourself, say hi, and uh, yeah, you'll find lots of people there to 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 show you things, answer questions. Oh, one more one more question from more Valeria, questions. I think. Uh, yes, Jeremy. Sorry, one more kind of hard question. I think yeah. the problem is kind of translating things right between the different theorem provers because we wanted. Yeah. To, to be able to say, okay, I'm getting the subtyping from PVS and I'm going to use the, you know, whatever kind of the good real analysis things from, from, from whole light, whatever. Yeah. And, and that we don't have yet any theoretical um, understanding, yeah. of, uh, 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 I think. I, I mean, I was going to say where where are you placing your bets? Where do you think this is going to be? Oh, I think I think it'll 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 happen. So in I, I remember like in the in the around the two thousands I think uh, at, at the interactive theorem proving conference every year there'd be a couple of papers on on porting things between systems and you know mm -hmm. new tools to translate something from you know Hal Ford to Hal Light to Isabel or something like that, um, and they never caught on even though in principle you could do it. It turns. I mean, it's like you know, mathematicians. You know, there there are, there are dozens of textbooks on abstract algebra and group theory. You know, you want your own textbook, right? So when you're building your library, you don't want to just import the results from another library. You want them expressed, you know, in your own library and integrated in your syntax and so on. Um, uh, as I said, it is almost a scandal that people just keep formalizing the same theorems in, in different libraries. Um, people are coming back. So a student of mine, Mario Carnero, is uh, is is working on tools that you know to translate between. I mean, in fact, he has uh, imported the entire MetaMath library into Lean. Um, um, so again, proof of concept, you can do it, right? There's uh, uh, all the results in MetaMath now are true of the zermelo frankel you know sets in in Lean. Uh, so if proof of concept, you can do it. Um, we still need to learn how to make it practical so that when you've you know just imported a bunch of results, they're kind of better integrated in 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 your library. Um, yeah, and again, that's where I think I, I, again, a lot of it is just tools and implementation. Um, but part of it is we need better theory. We never we need better logical theory that tells us how to 
build the right interfaces and you know and 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 get different knowledge bases to interact yeah no i, I think i totally agree it, it is very interesting problem for logicians right how to improve this translation between systems and 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 how to make it all yeah easy. it's as i said it's it's the frontier it's a it's a brave new world yeah so thank you so much Okay. So on that note, let me say to everybody, thank you. Thank you for, 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 for listening and for sticking around and, uh, and stay safe, be well, and, uh, and, and good luck. Thank you very much again, Professor. I think it was really, really nice talk. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.